Jim called me, said the corn will go. We need to get up there to be a farmhand for them. Let's get to it. All right, so right now I'm unhooking the Magnum, so I need to put the loader back on it. So I'm gonna unhook the grain cart, put the loader on it. Now I need to transport a couple, uh, the baler and this Magnum up there and the bale trailer. Basically, Jim's gonna let me bale up the corn stalks, so I need to get them off the field right away because he's gonna want to uh, plow it up. So that's the mission right now. All right, get in here. We are just going to go right over there and hook up the loader. Check to make sure. Looks like we're a little bit off. Alright, so now we got our spear on there. My favorite uh, bale picker upper. Uh, well, now i got to figure out how am I going to do this. Okay, I think I'm going to hook up the bale, uh, the gooseneck hitch here. I'm going to just drive this magnum down there. I'm going to trailer the other magnum. We'll put it, we'll go get our GMC and we'll put that on the trailer and then we will take both down so that way I only have to take two trips because that's the only way I can figure out without taking multiple three trips. Yes, we are going to have to road this a little bit, but uh, it's alright. Got pretty good tires on it. Alright, we'll hook this up. Alright, that's hooked up. Now we have to go get the bale trailer. Where did I leave the bale trailer at? Oh, there it is. Just love this bale trailer. It works nicely. Got to lower that hitch there. Get it low for this gooseneck. Put that gooseneck on like that looking good so it's gonna ride it a little bit high don't really feel like changing that height on the gooseneck hitch there not really worth it means we're not gonna load it raise that up like so as you can see it's run a little bit high oh well shouldn't matter too much so if anybody cuts me off just just to let them know this thing is going right through the rear of their tailgate the spear that is so don't cut this tractor off most likely I won't be able to catch up with them anyways but just in case the spear it's hunting for you looks like we got some weeds over there in our grass we're gonna have to end up spraying that I'll probably just end up spot spraying it uh, it's not too much so maybe just with our uh, little Honda UTV, we can just put a tank on there, spray them down quickly. 26 miles an hour. I don't remember ever driving 26 miles an hour when I was driving the 7140. Pretty sure this thing is uh, ticked up a couple uh, gears because uh, I thought ours would only go maybe 19. Maybe I'm off. I didn't think it went over 20, but maybe I'm off. As I said, don't cut this mean tractor off. That spear will do some definite damage in the rear of your car or truck. So we're going to go to Jim's uh, field on the hill, right adjacent to his place. It's right over there, so it's right next to his place, but he uh, said that we can take the corn stalks off of it, so basically we're going to roll them up and uh, use them as uh, corn fodder or uh, straw, basically, in our barns, in our dairy. Man, this is a big hill we got to climb up. So Jim said the trucks will not go back up this way, so you always have to drive down it. But, man, you really got to trust the brakes, that's for sure. I do not see the harvester. Jim must be already running. That means I'm a little behind. I'm gonna have to tell the wifey come pick me up real quick. Oh, yep. 
he's running over there. So I need to get to... I'm supposed to be running the grain cart for him and also helping him unload the truck. So uh, he's probably mad at me right now. All right, we're going to get out here and hopefully... Uh, called my wife. She's supposed to pick me up here soon. As you see, Jim is uh, harvesting away. Uh, his flashers are already running. Here comes my wife, bearing down. Man, I gotta tell, I don't know what's wrong with the female drivers in my family. I mean, they just drive like crazy. Uh, my wife loves her Jeep, by the way, even though she drives it like a mad woman, but it's awesome. All right, so my wife just dropped me off. I'm gonna open this up. I'm gonna go put this on our gooseneck and then I have to load up our other magnum. Starts up like always. Watch out, Buck. Oh man, I was such in a rush today. I don't think I fed Buck. There you go, Buck. Sorry about that. All right, hook that up. So this will work nicely pulling that baler. Hopefully I don't lose the baler in the magnum. I, I do have problems with that, but uh, can't really afford uh, buying another one, so I'm gonna have to drive carefully. All right, this is a pretty flat area. We'll keep it right there. Starts up. So. Usually, uh, I had some people ask me, uh, why don't I use ramps? I usually just, uh, slowly jump the front tires up on this trailer. I just don't need the ramps. Kind of like so. I don't really need ramps. There we go, drive this up there. Don't want it too far ahead because that's going to be a lot of weight. Alright. There's that big beast is. So our tires on the baler, it's so wide of a baler means it's a big 6x5 baler. But uh, they will hopefully stay on. They might be an issue. So these roads around here are definitely bumpy. Look at that. The Dirty Max is getting it done. That's what she said. Uh, this uh, three-quarter ton truck, it's probably a little too small for this, but short distance, it pulls it pretty well. So I'm, I'm glad I got this truck, but uh, I don't really pull for long distance. So obviously it has the power. I'm sure uh, Jim is waiting for me, so I need to get out over there. And I'll probably go unload them quickly with the grain cart before I uh, unload this baler. So I don't know exactly how. Uh oh. Now, now here's the challenge Will this truck pull this baler up this hill? Now, all you uh, General Motors haters, here, here's your uh, bet. We'll do it. Here it comes. It's going. It's going the distance. Oh, look at that. It did it. Sweet. Now, that is one heck of a hill. Now, kind of a bumpy here, too, so you couldn't really get a good running start at it. I'm trying to hurry up so I can go unload Jim but I can't do, get anything done with all these bumps. All right, so we will hopefully we'll jump in this uh, beautiful new uh, demo tractor he has over here. Can I fit for it? Oh yeah, I can. All right. All right, we'll get in here, shut the door there. And move this down, all right. Start this all up. Uh, we don't have, so we're gonna rush over there. We don't have time to let this thing warm up. Jim will probably get really mad. Oh shoot, I 
forgot to open the tarp, so I'm gonna have to do that quickly. Race down here. Beautiful. Jim's new fixed up class combine. There he goes. Filling in us right there. Uh, I guess we got about a fourth of this field done so far. He does says it's still pretty wet, but he wants he said it's go time, so we are going. That new uh, extension he got on that harvester is just giant. It just holds a ton. I think it basically I can only take two loads of the harvester and this uh, grain cart before this J and M here on tracks before I am full. So this thing will fill up basically a semi. Uh, that's it's a little bit over so if you fill it up to the max it will overflow overfill a semi but if you just regular fill it up you know fill up a semi so that it's kind of convenient there's a lot of farmers that have like a thousand bushel or thousand fifty bushel grain carts for that reason all right we'll back out of Jim's way there all right now that Jim's taken off we'll check over this uh, tractor here quickly just because I didn't get a chance to check it over. I always like walking around every farm vehicle I uh, run before I run it for a long period of time just to make sure that we are uh, okay and everything, nothing's uh, broken on it. messing around driving my drone and uh, Jim is already full. Man, he's gonna be mad at me. Alright, Jim called and told me that he uh, he thinks he broke a belt on here, so where is this belt at? So I think we're gonna have to go pick that up, so I think we are down. It's one of the drive belts. Um, he told me to run back over here to the farm, see if we have one quickly. And if I can't find one, just bring his truck back and he will uh, def go and uh, grab one here. Uh, the I don't know, I don't think the John Deere dealer across the street will have one. You never know though. Alright, supposed to be in this little uh, cabinet here. Alright, no belts around. So I'm gonna, like he told me to, drive this truck back. He's gonna call the dealer and make sure they have one and uh, probably go pick it up right away. And, uh, oh man, bumpy. We will get over here and, uh, all right, Jim's gonna take that truck and go pick up a uh, belt. He said I could start uh, bailing if I wanted to, just to uh, get, make sure this gets off so I can uh, help him out once he gets back here and I won't have to uh, stay really late doing that. 
All right, we got this uh, unchained. Now I'm gonna back it up. Hopefully, start bailing right away. Boy, is this thing loud! Probably should uh, shut this back window here, but I kind of like hearing the bailer run, just so you can kind of hear any uh, squeaking, any uh, bearing going out, anything hot that may be going, or just some unnormal sounds like a chain loosening up or something like that helps keep that baler nice and uh, serviceable. Here's we're gonna get a lot of bales off this field. So we got one round around the field. Uh, I'm kind of glad that Jim broke down even though it's kind of inconvenient for him. It's kind of working out for us to get caught up basically bailing otherwise we'd have to be running the grain carts, dumping the trucks, doing something. We weren't be able to be in the baler. So I'm hoping uh, he uh, stalls a little bit longer and we get enough time to uh, catch up with bailing. And uh, that will work out just great for us. I know that's a really bad thing to say for a hired hand probably. But uh, maybe this is payback for all the times he yelled at me. But most of the times I deserved it. But uh, slight, slight bit of payback. I got a fair bit of what he's already harvested, already uh, bailed up or rolled up, if you want to say. Oh, wow. He took a little uh, jump in the field right there. Make sure I turn around this bale right there. Uh, Jim called and said if I, I wanted some uh, tuckle hell. Yeah. I really want some tuckle bell, but I'm worried about it's going to make uh, life in the field hell uh, it, it gives let's just say quick bathroom breaks so the good thing is we're not too far away from the Jim's farm so if I have an emergency I can just run like a running from the cops to the bathroom but uh, I think I'm gonna chance it get some Taco Bell in my system uh, I am having a hard time with these bales rolling. As you see in front of me, now I have to stop and uh, go around this bale. But I've had a few bales kind of roll on me. So they, they make bales round, so when you get a uh, big hilly field like this, it's really hard to uh, get them all on angle. Looks like we only have a few more rolls to do. And uh, we will be cut up. It's a good thing because then we can uh, stop, eat some uh, Taco Hell a little bit, uh, see if it agrees with us today, and uh, then get started right back up. So the belt won't take long putting on that harvester at all, so that's good. I was thinking once when I'm driving in here, I was just like, uh, I don't know why you even brought that other bale trailer. So when I'm making uh, uh, corn stock bales or even uh, soybean bales, I make them smaller than what I usually do uh, just because uh, 
the baler I have isn't really designed for that type of bale. So that, that bale trailer is really designed for a bigger bale. It doesn't really work w well with these smaller bales, so I think I'm just going to put them on the gooseneck I drove here with the baler. So I don't know what I was thinking. I didn't have my morning coffee, obviously, in a Dumbo. That's my only excuses I have. All right, so we are just gonna stop right here. So I'm gonna start picking up. I wanna make sure I pick up the bales around the outskirts of this field so he doesn't have problems turning around. We don't have problem. oh man. This bale's rolled over. This didn't damage it, did it? All right, so it just barely rolled. Had two, oh man, this is his new truck too. Oh, all right. So the good thing about when you're bailing corn stalks like this is you sometimes bail up some uh, ears of corn that don't make it through the harvester. And basically the cows, they love corn. So it's uh, kind of feed in a way. So they like picking through it a little bit. All right, so I'm gonna unhitch this trailer that I didn't need anyways. And I'm gonna start putting some bales on this trailer. All right, we'll start this up, lower this down, unhitch this trailer. So if you see, they're just so wide. So if you, you put try to put a bale on there, they're just gonna roll, and then you're gonna have problems with them rolling off the back or rolling off the side even. So it does work all right when you're stacking them uh, three high. Or not really three high, a, a basically a triangle, put one in the center, but it still doesn't work the best with the smaller bales, so it's really designed for the normal size bales we have. It holds 14 normal size bales, I should say, but it's convenient because it's basically uh, non-hydraulic, it's just mechanical tripped trailer, so it just trips to the side and rolls them off. All right, so let's start this up. Lower that down. Put the jacks down. All right, we'll pick that up. So now we will start uh, stabbing some bales. Probably should have brought my other uh, Attachment. I was wasn't thinking right, and I was thinking these are going to be the bigger bales. So these are more compacted. They're a little bit harder to get on there. That's for sure. A little bit harder to stab. Let's just say. Kind of have to take a rubbing, a, more of a running uh, stab at it. All right. I wanted to get these bales away from his uh, his trucks here. Before uh, Jim comes back and sees him. So this bale is actually mostly soybean uh, straw, so it's kind of from, it was already in the baler. So Jim, he's back over there, so I'm gonna get these few bales around this trailer picked up here quickly. Then I'm gonna go help him put that belt on and then we'll probably start uh, harvesting away, hopefully at least. And it's really hard stabbing these bales. Looks like I left a few bales over here still, so I gotta get all these picked up. And then hopefully uh, able to still help Jim out so many bales around here so I don't think we're gonna have uh, any shortage of uh, corn stubble or soybean stubble so I don't think we're gonna bail all the fields because that, that'll just get a little crazy. And I know uh, the ethanol plants they like this corn stubble so I've heard that possibly an ethanol plant will be uh, going in here soon Jim thinking about uh, possibly going in with the partner deal, so it's like local farmer co-op ethanol plant. That's the word anyways, I don't know. Jim definitely needs to get some, uh, uh, some grain bin storage or something around here. Don't know what exactly what he's going to do. 
Alright, so that's all the bales around this area, at least. Right, let's go help Jim. Alright, so we got the drive belt on, so I'm, uh, he's gonna start it up, and I'm gonna see how it sounds here quickly. Alright, alright, so he's going to turn on the separator. Uh, it seems like everything's working. I think we are in business. Alright, I'm gonna move his truck out of the way here. And, uh, I'm gonna run over here, get the grain car underneath Jim, and then, uh, he should be able to, uh, take off there. Start this up. Gotta go over a lot. There we go. Yeah, there he's unloading into us. Alright, Jim looks like it's taken off good. Uh, I'm going to drive behind him just for a little bit here just to make sure I don't hear anything. And then I'm going to unload this into the semi. Open this window here quickly. So that way I can kind of listen to any weird sounds coming from his uh, harvester. Does it sound weird to me? Alright, so uh, Jim did bring some uh, Taco Bell. It's a bad thing about when you're uh, harvesting, you're going to have to eat in the tractor. Alright, we're going to shut this. I don't want all that grain in my face or in this cab. It's a new shiny cab, that's for sure. Get this over there, and then we are unloading. j and doesn't take long. It takes about maybe two minutes to unload or not even that really we are unloading into the back pup but we're gonna fill up both uh, the front uh, little uh, grain truck and then the back so it doesn't really matter too much so I'm just filling this up I know I'm filling up on the tarp side but uh, really doesn't matter because uh, how high my uh, unload auger is and everything just doesn't really matter to me but when you sit higher on the tractors it's really not a problem with how high these tractors sit nowadays so go follow Jim a little bit oh man he's already full looks like he's getting close to being full I was hoping to get a little bit of time that's the problem when you're harvesting corn you just have no time to uh, eat your snacks or for me to eat my Taco Bell Alright, Jim's going to pull over here to the side there quickly. And I'm going to pull up underneath him. When he's unloading here in me, I'm going to eat my Taco Bell here quickly. Put this up. Lay that down nicely for a nice little uh, place for me to eat. Alright, he's already done, so I need to back up here. So we can get a good run at it. So, uh, right now, we can finally, uh, finish eating our Taco Bell. Fill me up. Go a little bit closer. Don't like driving on our, uh, swap there. It's not good. So, with that big hopper on the back of his, uh, or basically on his, uh, harvester there, uh, it really makes it convenient because he can go a long ways without needing to unload on me takes a little bit of the strain of basically rushing back and forth from the or trying to catch them for every single load it gets a little bit more time let me tell you this all tracked uh, grain cart he has here is nice I mean this thing just rides like a cloud in the field it leaves hardly any uh, compaction whatsoever. Uh, really impressed by this. I'm going to give it my seal of approval to Jim. Really like the grain cart. It's fast unloading. It's easy to see the, the auger and everything. It just, uh, everything about it is just really nice. Uh, I really like his, uh, his modifications he did on his uh, Lexion here sure makes it uh, convenient for me and he has uh, he put the tracks on and he put the uh, grain bin extensions on that uh, 
really impressive of how easy it is to uh, run grain cart or run that uh, harvester, that's for sure. Alright, looks like Jim is waiting on me. I'm gonna pull under here. Uh, uh oh. Uh oh. Uh, Taco Bell is messing with my belly. I need to get my butt over here to the bathroom. Oh, run, 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 run. Ooh, butt cheats. Don't fail me now. Don't fail me now. Whew, whew. Uh, don't worry. I made it and I washed my hands. Whew, that was a close one. Definitely a close one. That one, I had to sit on the toilet a little bit longer just to recover. Because that took a lot out of me. A whole lot out of me. So, the good thing is, uh, I think Jim's just probably laughing his uh, behind off at me because he's not harvesting. Probably is in there laughing so hard he can't even uh, stand it. I'm sure glad I didn't freaking make an accident in his brand new tractor. Alright. Maybe Jim was worried about me, but I highly doubt it. He probably was laughing at me. Uh, get this unloaded. Looks like Jim can handle the rest over there. And then I probably start bailing. Don't think I'm going to have another emergency, but I don't know for sure. So we are bailing around, so we just have a little bit more to do, so we shouldn't take us too much longer. But thank you all for watching, and I will see you later here in Oregon. Catch you next time. Thank you all for watching. Like, comment, and share, and subscribe. See you next time.